There are also other ways of, of uh, approaching this problem. And one uh, that you'll also look at in the exercise is the so-called AIC or Akaike Information Criterion. Akaike Information Criterion is a method that's based in information theory and uh, that uses a slightly different philosophical approach that's more similar maybe to, to Bayesian statistics than it is to classical statistics with p-values. In the case of a Kaige, you'll end up essentially looking at model probabilities like you would in, in Bayesian analysis. Now, let me just run through briefly how uh, the AAC works. First, when you have a probabilistic model <coughs> sorry, of some system that you're analyzing, uh, then that means that you're able to compute the probability for any possible outcome, for any possible outset, uh, <coughs> sorry, data set. In the case of, for instance, tossing a coin 10 times, then if you have a probabilistic model of, of that, then uh, for a given set of parameters, you should be able to compute the probability of getting zero hits, one hit, two, up to 10 hits, if you've tossed it 10 times, for instance. If you have a phylogenetic problem, then as we've seen, uh, having a probabilistic model of that allows you to compute the probability of any given alignment, for instance, for the Jukes and Cancer model. Okay, for given parameters in the Jukes and Cancer model, a given tree, given branch lengths, etc., you can compute the probability of, of any possible alignment, of any possible data set. So this means that having a probabilistic model of some, say, biological system, means that you have defined a probability distribution actually over the possible data sets, over the possible outcomes. Now, there's something called the kullback liebler divergence or kullback liebler distance uh, that's used sometimes in, in, in information theory. So it's a very central uh, measure. This is a way essentially of or one interpretation of the, of the Kullback-Liebler divergence is that it's a measure of the distance between probability distributions. In the case of discrete probability distributions, there's a very simple formula for it here. You just run through every possible value in your, uh, of, your, of your data set, take for each of them the probability for that uh, index of uh, the distribution P and the same value for Q and it, uh, compute this very simple formula. This will tell you the distance between the distributions. If the distributions are identical, this distance will be zero. The more different they are, the larger the, the distance will be. Now, since a probabilistic model essentially is the same as defining, having a probabilistic model over some system is essentially the same as having defined a probability distribution over possible data sets, then one approach to finding a good model for some data, a good uh, description of reality, would be to find the model that most closely approximates reality. And as we can see from the definition of kullback liebler divergence here, that would mean finding a model that has the smallest kullback liebler distance from the true probability distribution. Okay? I've tried to indicate it on the slide that we have here. So in this, using the histogram, I've shown the, uh, in some imaginary example, I've shown the probabilities of, of different possible data sets as the histogram. That's reality. That's how, how the world really looks. Then I've shown in blue lines, I've tried to sketch three different possible uh, models that we try to approximate that reality, that we try to explain this reality. Okay? Q1, Q2, and Q3. In this particular case, Q2 is closer to the real probability distribution. It would have the smallest kullback liebler divergence of these three uh, distributions, and it would therefore be the one, the model that best approximated reality, the one that we would choose. This is the goal in AIC. AIC, a Kaige information criterion, is a measure that essentially estimates the expected relative kullback liebler distance between some model and full reality. Okay? It can't give you the, the absolute distance from full reality since we don't know what full reality is, but because of some tricky mathematics, it can actually estimate the expected relative kullback liebler distance. And this means that if we use AIC to estimate this kullback liebler this uh, relative kullback liebler distance from full reality, for a set of different models, then we can pick the model that has the smallest of these 
relative distances. That would be the best model in a set of models that we're comparing. As it turns out, that estimate is actually extremely simple to compute. It has this very simple equation that I've shown at the bottom of the slide. The AIC for a given model is minus two times the logarithm of the likelihood of the fitted model, the maximum likelihood of the model, plus two times the number of free parameters. So you can see that as you get more parameters, as k increases, you would get a larger and larger value of AIC. As the logarithm increases, you would get a smaller and smaller value of AIC. So in this case, smaller AIC values are better. The larger the likelihood, the smaller the AIC. The smaller the number of parameters, the smaller the AIC. So in this way, AIC takes into account both the fit and the number of parameters. And it actually, because of the math I just sort of uh, suggested intuitively here, what, what this is about, this measure is not just uh, taken out of thin air, it's actually an estimate of this kullback liebler divergence. And in general, if you compute AIC for different models, then the model with the smallest AIC will be the model that most closely approximates reality. This means that if you want to do model selection in the Akaike information criterion paradigm, you would do it as follows. You would start out by fitting a set of alternative uh, models to the data. The models don't have to be nested, and you can have as many models as you like. For each of the models, you record the maximized log likelihood and the number of free parameters, k, for each of those models. For each of the models, I've shown uh, an example in the table at the bottom of the slide. For each of the models, you can then compute AIC for that model according to this extremely simple formula, minus two times the log likelihood plus two times the number of free parameters. This gives you an AIC value, and you can then sort them based on AIC, with the smallest AIC values being the best ones. In this particular example, I've tried different substitution models, and it turns out that this particular model called TVM plus uh, I plus G is the best of the uh, investigated models. However, you can actually do it better than that, because it turns out that not only is AIC a measure or a, an estimate of the expected relative kullback liebler divergence between a model and reality, you can actually also take a set of AIC values and from them compute something that are very much like Bayesian model probabilities. Ways of quantifying how much belief we have in the different possible models being the best model. It's done in a reasonably simple manner and you'll get uh, the opportunity to actually do this in an exercise uh, also. First, for each model, you compute what we call the delta AIC value for that model. The delta AIC value is simply the AIC value of the model minus the minimal AIC value. So in the case I've shown in the, in the uh, table here, the minimal AIC value is the one on the top. So the delta AIC value for the best model will by definition be zero. The delta AIC value for the second best would be about 1.3. The delta AIC value for the third would be about 1.6, etc., etc. You simply subtract the minimum AIC value from each of these AIC values, and that will give you the deltas. Once you have for each of these parameters computed the delta AIC value, you can compute something called the Akaike weight according to the formula I've shown you here. The idea is that you first, for each of your models, compute minus 0.5 times the delta AIC value and take the exp, the exponential function of that. Once you've computed that for each of your models, you sum up all of those terms. You then finally take that term for each model and divide by the sum of all the terms, and this will give you the so-called Akaike weight. As it turns out, and these are numbers that will sum to one by definition, it turns out that the Akaike weight can actually be interpreted as the probability that any given model is the best one in the kullback liebler sense, given the data that we have and given the initial set of models. So given the models that we've looked at here, there's a 45% chance that this is the best model, there's a 23% chance this is the best model, etc., etc. This way of using probabilities, as I mentioned in the 
uh, as I uh, mentioned in the Bayesian talk, uh, is actually very much like, like Bayesian inference, that probabilities used as a way of quantifying uncertainty uh, are believed by many people to be the only uh, consistent way of reasoning uh, in, the, in the face of uncertainty. I won't go into that again, I'm just mentioning that there's a connection to Bayesian statistics here. This way of comparing models, doing model selection with archaic information criterion and quantifying them with probabilities, can actually be used in a general strategy for answering scientific questions. The idea would be that you start out by constructing some comprehensive set of plausible alternative models that, uh, or a hypothesis that account for how the system that you're analyzing uh, works. You wouldn't want to make too many, just based on your scientific knowledge, you would construct a set of, of plausible alternatives. Each of those models would have to be phrased in the form of mathematical models. You would then assess evidence for all of your hypotheses by computing model probabilities, for instance, according to this AIC method I just showed you. Based on that, you can make conclusions. You can say, okay, this is, for instance, the best model, or you can say, okay, it appears that all the best models have uh, a parameter for gamma, a distributed rates, or whatever uh, other aspect you're looking at. You can see that this is quite different from null hypothesis testing, where you uh, typically assess the fit of only the null model, which is incidentally a single implausible model that you don't believe is true. But don't get me started on, on that particular uh, aspect here. If you use model probabilities to assess how much belief you have in different uh, possible hypotheses, you can actually use it for something very interesting called multi-model inference. If you want, for instance, to make predictions from a model, like the example I showed at the start of this talk, then you can make much more robust predictions by explicitly taking into account a weighted average of the predictions that are made by a range of different models, where the weight would be simply the model probability. You can also use model averaging. If you have some parameter that's present in more than one of your investigated models, for instance, the gamma shape parameter in the case of phylogeny, then you can make a much more reliable estimate by averaging across all uh, your models, again using the model probabilities as weights. Finally, you can actually use this as a, diff a direct way, as I also suggested, of finding the relative importance of parameters. If you have, say, 20 different substitution models and five of them have a, a parameter for transitions and the rest don't, then you can add up the probabilities of those models that do have that parameter and that will give you a relative importance of that particular parameter, which you can then use to make conclusions about your system. Let's take an example just to make this more concrete. So let's say that we have an alignment, a DNA alignment, and we're considering which of these two hypotheses best describe how the sequences have been evolving. In one case, we have the hypothesis that they've been evolving according to the Jukes and Cancer model, the model where all substitution rates are the same and where all nucleotides have the same frequency. This model, in one way of phrasing it, has one free parameter, the substitution rate. As an alternative, let's consider the Kimura two-parameter model. This model has two different substitution rates. It also assumes that all nucleotides have the same frequency, but it has two different substitution rates, transitions and transversions. In this way of phrasing it, we would say this model has two free parameters, so it has one more than the other model. Now, let's say that we fit both of these models to a particular alignment and we get the following log likelihood values. The Jukes and Cancer model has a log likelihood of minus 2034.3. Note these are negative numbers because probabilities are always between 0 and 1 and the logarithm of a number that's less than 1 is negative, so log likelihood is always negative. Let's say K2P, the Kimura 2 parameter model, has a slightly larger likelihood, uh, namely a log of minus 2026.2. So that's larger than, than the Jukes and Cancer model had. We would now assess evidence for the different models by computing model probabilities. We would do that by first computing the AIC value. The simple formula was, I remind you, minus 2 times the log likelihood plus 2 times the number of free parameters. In the case of Jukes and Cantor, that's minus 2 times minus 
plus two times one, because that model had one free parameter, for a total of 4070.6. In the case of K2P, the AC would be minus two times the minus 2026.2, plus two times two, it had two parameters, which would give us 4056.4. So according to the AIC, K2P is the better model, it has the smallest AIC. We would now compute the delta AICs. That's simply the AIC of the model minus the smallest AIC. So in the case of K2P, since that <coughs> sorry, has the smallest AIC, it has a delta value of zero. In the case of Jukes and Cantor, it has an AIC delta value of 14. The AIC of JC is about 14 point, or is 14.2 larger than, than the AIC of K2P. <coughs> Once we have the delta AICs, we can compute model probabilities according to this equation. First, for each of the models, we compute the exponential function of minus 0.5 times the delta AIC. In the case of Jukes and Cancer, that amounts to 0.000825. In the case of K2P, since the delta AIC value is 0, it's the exp of 0, which is 1. Secondly, we take the sum of those terms. That is, in this case, 1.000825. Finally, to compute model probabilities, we take each of these terms and divide them by the sum. In the case of Jukes and Cantor, that's 0.08%. In the case of K2P, that's 99.92%. This means that K2P is very strongly supported. Our degree of belief in this model is much greater than our degree of belief in Jukes and Cantor. In fact, it's about 1250 times stronger. If we take this value and divide by that value, we can see how many times more likely this one is. This is what we would call the odds. So this way of using probabilities, we can not only select the model that we believe the most in, we can also quantify how much more belief we have in it. And that's actually an extremely useful thing. Mm -hmm.